All right, so I recently bought the Easy Boost 380s and I've been wearing them quite a bit actually, trying to do a month review of these and I'll follow back with you guys uh, at the end of the next month. But I did want to give you guys a comparison video between the Aliens and then some of the other 350V2 variants as well as the original 350V1. <laughs> What is going on guys, Hess here, CollectiveKicks.com. If you guys wanna shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description, happy shopping. So it looks like we have a lot of cool colorways and models dropping in December of Yeezy. So I will link the Adidas site in the description for those that are wondering. And usually they update their page to let you guys know which ones are dropping which weekends. But this video I wanted to go ahead and focus on uh, the 380 Aliens and compare it to not just the 350 V2s, you got the original 350 V2s as well back here and then also uh, the 350s. And just show you guys the evolution from the 350s up to the 380s. A lot of people thought that the 380s were actually the 350 V3s, but that obviously didn't happen. They changed the name, it seems like, last minute. This is a, a really crazy model, though. And a lot of people were like, nah, I'm not feeling these. I saw in the comments in my review, which I posted already, if you guys missed that video. But I actually, I really like these shoes, and the more that I wear them, the more I'm like, okay, they're absolutely the most comfortable of all of these Yeezys that are out here, which says a lot because the 350 V2s are really comfortable already. But the more I wear them, I'm actually really sold on them. They're really comfortable. And although different than the others, um, uniquely good. And so I'll get into some of those differences in this video. But first things first, start with the original one right here, the Turtle Doves. This is the first pair of Yeezy Boost 350s that released. And look at mine are pretty beat up. I should probably clean these up. This is the crazy part though, is because the midsoles on these actually don't clean up very well. The little boost section here and this section right here are different than the rest. And so they usually age and wear differently as you can see on the bottom of the shoe. These do feature encased boosts and then have just a little bit visible on the outsole. But it is on the inside of the shoe and these things work super comfortable for those that remember these when they first drop. Really bizarre looking, very, very interesting. Uh, pattern and the stitching up the front of the shoe and the lacing design on the shoe was just super different and original. The little pull tab with a little extra on it back there and then the weird ridges on the midsole which was something that kind of reminds you of Thanos's chin but it is a really bizarre look to the midsole. I thought these were great though. I always loved the first looks of the 350s. The 750s I was never sold on personally but these ones love at first sight. I was like these are definitely going to be dope. They're going to be comfortable. I took out the insoles of mine for those wondering because I like them personally without the insoles. They fit me better. These are a size 9. I'm usually a 9.5. So that's a little tip for those people that have the 350s or the 380s. If you find that they're a little bit too snug, remove the insoles and see if they're better. Usually I find that better for me with somebody that has wider feet. The 350s were quite a success and they transitioned to the 350 V2s, which they changed the entire shoe. Like they kind of look similar to the Turtle Doves with this weird little pattern, a uh, knit pattern all over the shoe, this prime knit. But and then you also have the uh, the stitching up the middle of the shoe, the very front. That actually goes all the way up here through the top of the tongue. Then they continue that on to the 350 V2s and then you have the cross stitching on the back of the shoe as well. In this one you don't have that on the Turtle Doves. Some of the 350 V2s have pull tabs, some of them don't. And then on some of them you will also do get a little bit of different design element on the back like right here. This one was crazy loud, one of my favorite ones. It was so obnoxious at first it was kind of offensive. And then after they release so many colorways like this, like I personally love the, the statement piece that this one offers um, now. Notice from the very first one though, the Adidas branding is really, really small. I mean, there's just a little bit on the outsole there, nothing on the upper. And then also you just have a little spot right here that has uh, the, the trefoil. You wouldn't know that these are Adidas from looking at them. They did the same thing on the 350 V2s. You do have the three stripes back here and it does say Adidas on the insole. It also does say Adidas at the very tip of the top of the shoe and then it has boost on the back. The 350 V2 was actually quite a nice upgrade from the 350s with regards to the encased boost. Like they made it much, much better on this version. You could see through and see the boost on the bottom, but the overall traction on this is better and it's not likely to fall apart. Like the 350 V1s got really dirty and fell apart really easily. The rubber that they used on this for the encasing is much, much better. It was similarly different though to the first ones. You just have, you had a pretty similar shape, just aggressively different. The other thing that's also different is just how big the platform of the bottom of the shoe is. It's much bigger on uh, the 350 V2 and it actually sticks out quite a bit further as well. Uh, as you can see here, it's pretty chunky. So every sense of Yeezy 350 V2 static colorway, they had a lot of these now like this where you have a clear, little window right here on the side of the shoe. 
which is kind of interesting, kind of nice. It gives a little bit of a different look. So they definitely made some changes from the 350s and they also made some changes to the pattern uh, look of the shoes with the future versions that we've seen this year. I don't know why they just didn't call these the V3s to be honest, because they're just different enough. The knit shape is exactly the same. It's just the knit material, which is completely different. But to be fair, the Ultra Boost, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, all of those have different knit patterns and it's the exact same shoe as well. So it's similarly different. They should have just called this one the V3 because it is different enough in my opinion that it constitutes a difference from the previous version. But then you fast forward to the alien joints right here and this is where they flipped everything. It still looks like the Yeezy 350 in a sense where you have the same lacing pattern as you did on the previous um, versions. And it does have a one piece upper as you could see here. And the difference is the tongue does not protrude outwards, it's actually bunched at the top. So it gives it more of like a sock-like look and feel. They also took this translucent material right here on the side, and it is see-through when you actually wear them, which I actually didn't know until I tried them on with my colorful socks and I saw right through it, obviously. But that's the same thing that they did on the 350 V2s here, and they just basically made it a different version of that on the 380s. The midsole on the 380s is totally different as well. The 350s had that ribbed like look to it like the 350 V1s, but they smoothed that out completely on this one. And I actually really like the fact that they smoothed it out. Uh, I mean, we've seen it over and over again on the previous model. It's okay that they can mix it up and make it a little different. And something I mentioned in the review, there's actually a little bit of a pattern to this. There's two different tones to the midsole, which is hard to see from pictures. But when you get them in hand, you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. They can use that as like a creative element on other colorways. A lot of people weren't really loving this colorway, particularly the one that released, which is the Alien. It's similar enough in the same vein where it's not uh, like far enough out there where people are gonna go, oh wow, that's really original. But when you get them in hand, it is a little bit different because it does feel thicker in some places and thinner in others. So it gives it a little bit more dynamic to that um, just one piece knit upper. Then you do have the weird alienish sort of like skin thing right here on the side, which is pretty wild, which does look like you can lace it in a bunch of different places if you chose and they have that on both sides. The other major difference about this shoe from the other two, other than the ribbing gone from the midsole, is the curvature of the midsole. You could see here the difference is pretty significant. This one's off the ground a good inch and a half or so, while the back of the 350 V2 is just barely off the ground right there. Like when you step, it is weird. You have to step here and it does kind of rock right here, which is a different sensation than you're used to from the 350s. It definitely took me some getting used to, but the amount of boost on the 380s is, is significantly better as well. Matched with a softer midsole, it definitely is more felt than in the 350 V2s or the 350 V1s. So comfort-wise, the 380s is the winner in my books, even though it is a little bit different and unique with that step uh, because of that really weird protruding horn on the back of the shoe. There's a look at the traction patterns on the bottom. Uh, again, it's just a slow evolution. The traction on the 380 looks a little bit crazier, but it actually is really good. It feels good on feet at least. One thing that a lot of people don't love about this so far is the fact that they went with a sock-like liner on the top of the shoe, which honestly, not a fan of personally either. It is a little bit more of a pain in the ass to actually put these on because of how small of a narrow like passage this is. Uh, I also went true to size, should have gone up a half a size. 9.5 is my normal, I should have gone with a 10 for sure. It's similar to like the Adidas Ultra Boost. The regular one was really good. Then they decided to do the uncaged version, which I actually didn't mind. It wasn't my preference though because of how snug the collar was. And it's just really odd that they'd be doing the same sort of treatment to the Yeezys by doing the bunched up sock fit like on the 380 model, like the newer version. It seems like that's technology's a couple years too old, but it is what it is. Uh, on feet, I actually really dig them and trying to figure out how to style them is the interesting part, which some of you guys were really critical. I saw in the comments from my previous video on how I style them. Honestly, I wasn't trying to go all crazy and style them. Uh, my kids were like preoccupied for five minutes so I could go grab some pants, throw them on, and then do a video. It wasn't like as premeditated as a lot of people were assuming it was. But anyways, that is just kind of a look at the uh, the three different models side by side by side. So just to recap on the sizing, all three of these, uh, I'm a true 9.5 usually. These ones I got a nine because they didn't have 9.5 and they fit me just fine. Part of the reason why I took the insole out. Oddly enough, these fit really, really snug. So I actually go up to a size 10 in the 350 V2s. If I do have 9.5s, which I do, I take out the insoles as well on those ones. And then the same thing to be said on the 380s. I would go with a size 10, not a 9.5 personally, if that was me, but I do have a little bit of a wider foot. To each their own, don't use this as your own template for your feet because again, we all are different, unique flowers. What do you guys think about the new 380s 
and how does it stack up to any of the other uh, Yeezy models that have currently hit the market. I think that once the hype dies down on these ones, right now it's really high because Adidas didn't drop them when they were supposed to, and they're like now thought of as more limited, but once they start releasing tons and tons of colorways, I don't think people are gonna like these ones as much as the regular 350s. Personally, that's just my thoughts, but knowing that not too many people have these right now, being able to wear them, it definitely does turn some heads, and it is really, really comfortable on feet. So I will have a follow-up after wearing these for 30 days as well, so stay tuned to the channel. Uh, when I post that video. But anyways, that's my thoughts on the new model and that's my comparison to some of the other Yeezy models out here. Leave a comment, let me know what is your favorite Yeezy model to date. There's so many of them that they've dropped and there's a lot of them that I'm actually really looking forward to. Subscribe for more content, notification bell to be notified of when the videos go live and have a great rest of the day. Peace guys.